What's the YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at another Google SQL interview question marked as medium hosted on stratastrategy.com. Let's get into it. So this one's called World Tours. Very interesting one. And the description goes like this. A group of travelers embark on world tours starting with their home cities. Each traveler has an undecided itinerary that evolves over the course of the tour. Some travelers decide to abruptly end their journey mid-travel and live in their last destination. Given the data set of dates on which they travel between different pairs of cities, can you find out how many travelers ended back in their home city? For simplicity, you can assume that each traveler made at most one trip between two cities in a day. So basically, a bunch of people go on world tours or just traveling around the world, and some of them just stay somewhere, just like it so much that they're going to live there happily ever after. So. Not everyone comes back home to their hometown, but our task is to find out how many people actually end up in their home city. Let's check the data. We have travel history and the task mentioned we would have information about each trip they're taking on the world tour. So we have Alan right here, traveler name. We have start city, end city of each trip and the date of that trip. And Alan has a bunch of small trips which combine to that world tour. Salzburg is the starting city. Alan traveled from Salzburg to Cape Town, has a bunch of more travel in between, but ended up back in Salzburg from Bologna on the last date. Apparently this, date, this um, table is already ordered by date in ascending order, which is nice. So we can basically look up for how many people it is true that their starting city is also the ending city of their trip. We have a bunch of entries here. Kate, for example, only has one entry. So the starting city can't be the ending city. Let's think about how to approach this one. So we have that information. Basically, what I just did is look at one travel at a time. And in this case, see that the first entry of starting city is the same as the last entry of ending city, end city. And if that is the same, I would count it as, yeah, that person returned to their home city. We'll do the next thing for the next traveler, Carl. Luxembourg, the first starting city. Luxembourg, last ending city. So that would be another person that returned to their hometown. Kerry went from Kiev, last city was Odessa, so that person didn't return to their hometown, and so on and so forth. And I'm trying to do that in code. <laughs> and what I'm doing here pretty much is looking at the first value and the last value for each traveler. And that is based on the date, on the date ordering, which is already in order. But yeah, I'm basically looking at these partitions, sections of the table, windows of the table, and I guess you can see where I'm going because we're trying to use, we're going to use window functions to solve this one. And yeah, I know there's a window function for taking the first value and the last value, and I think that's going to come in very handy here. So we're just going to try to get the first value of all of these windows and the last value for start and end city. See if they're the same. If they are the same, we count them as one person returning home. And then we just count up how many persons we have that returned home, back to their home city. And yeah, that's the plan. So let's get into it. Select star, we're not. Well, we're gonna select star, and then I'm gonna try one of these window functions. So I'm gonna try first value, which would give me the first value based on something. So I'm going to apply my window function syntax, partition by, order by. We will partition by traveler because we're going to look at each traveler's travel itinerary individually. That's where we cut it off. And then we order by date in ascending order. So that the earliest date is on top. Yeah. That's basically the case already, but I don't want to assume that the table is ordered because 
yeah, that might not be the case for another example input. Okay, I'm gonna apply this to the start city. So we're gonna get the first value of start city for each traveler ordered by the date. Basically always this value, that's the entry I'm getting, I'm going for. Luxembourg for Carl, Salzburg for Alan, and so on. I'm gonna call this first city instead of start city and see if this works. Has a small typo in here. But this does work. So we do get first city for Allen, which is Salzburg, Luxembourg for Karl, which is supposed to be, John Bilbao, and Milan for Kate. Perfect. So that seems to work. That gives us exactly what we want now. Just need to do the same thing for the last city. So I'm going to copy this. And I could either use last value, which you got to be careful with, because it does sometimes work in unexpected ways. But I could also just order the window in descending order, which is going to flip it around, and the last entry will be on top. And then also use first value, but on the ending city. So. I'm going to look at this window again, flip it around because I order by date in descending order. So last, ent last row will be on top or will be the first we're looking at. And then take the value of end city, which is Salzburg. Yeah, that's all the magic. I'm going to call it last city, run it again, um, add a comma in here. <laughs> and have the first and last city of the travel. So we do get these, we do get these values for each row still because we didn't really group by anything or reduce it in any way. But yeah, first value is always gonna be the same for the entire window. Last city is always gonna be the same for the window. If we were using maybe lag and lead, it would be different for each row. But for this window function, since it's aggregating, it's always going to be the same value. Now we do have a lot of matches here, but Kerry, for example, has Kiev as first city and Odessa as last city, just as we see in the entry. Um, it's just, I think it's the other way around now because I have that descending order here in date. Yeah, but it does work as expected. Now we just got to remember what we're supposed to do, <laughs> which is counting up the amount of people for which that is the case. So where is that statement? Can you find out how many travelers ended back in their home city? So using that, let's put brackets around that and make that our main thing we're basing this off. We will select the count of travelers, it could be count, not just count distinct travelers, traveler, for which the start, the first city is the same as the last city on the trip. Let's see if this works. Our expected output is just gonna be one number exactly. And let's run it. This must have an alias. Let's call it itinerary. And we get three, which we're supposed to. Let's check the solution. It's gonna be accepted. And it's gonna be it. That's gonna be it for this question. I think it's an interesting one because it is a bit realistic, like I can see this being an actual question for the Google Maps team or Google Flights team. And yeah, it's an interesting question to think about and a good way to apply that first value and last value window function or just first value twice or last value twice. And 
yeah, it helps you think about these partitions. And if you don't really understand window functions yet, this could be a good question to practice with. And that's what I'm going to leave you with. You can try this question directly on stratusearch.com. I'm going to leave a direct link to that question. And you can try it out along with many other Medium tagged or Google tagged questions. It's going to be it for me today. See you next time. Bye.